it's, it's a bit haphazard. October Red, I'm here with Fraser Clark. We're in Wolverhampton. It's nice to be close to our sort of like our neck of the woods for a change. Yeah, homish. Homish. Homish, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, homish. Listen, Fraser, what a time to be alive. I know we're at the Boxer event, your home promoters event, but I want to rewind back to earlier on this week, the Saudi cards, the day of reckoning. Your thoughts on that phrase? You went out and saw Fury and Garnu. You called out Fabio Wardley ringside. It was a myth. Talk to me about this week. A good week for boxing. Um, happy for everyone involved. The rich keep getting richer. <laughs> but now, fair play to them. They've all worked hard. A bunch of good fighters. Two massive cards been announced. Um, a lot of hard work obviously gone into it. Just expect the biggest spectacles you've ever seen in your life because in Ghana, Fury is one thing. But this, if they're going to go bigger again then be scary but um more than anything just good fights good fights on it's took for some it took for some rich rich your excellency yeah, you know you know what i mean isn't it your excellency whatever it is, he's come he's come over and thrown a lot of money at you and you know he's really looked after a lot of people and he's got some he's got he's got things going that experience for you out there in saudi obviously you're watching the british champion fabio wardley the man with the target on his back you saw the fight with him and David Adelaide, a fight that you could have had. However, it worked out that way. Talk us through that fight and each of their performances. Yeah, um, it, was, it, was a, it was a good build-up, obviously. Highly anticipated. I think Fabio just went there about business and did his job. I think Adelaide was a little bit too much invested in everything that was going on before the fight, uh, rather than concentrating on the job. He got beat, got well beat. Um, so, you know, Fabio did well. Really good performance from him. And, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of good things to look at. It's really weird because before the lead-up of that fight, they were like, yeah, this is a good fight for David. You know, they're both, you know, at that British level. Then all of a sudden, Fabio stops and he's like, oh, it was a bit too soon for David. Talk to us a little bit about how that mindset of some of the fans shifts so rapidly because I thought it was a good step up. Yeah, but, match. yeah. It was a good match, really even match. One guy's developed quicker than the other guy. I'm not saying David won't come back and be a good fighter, but Fabio sort of had, had his shit together. Confidence, um, great shape, boxing skills are developing, understanding of boxing is developing. So he did well and uh, you know what? He went there and did a professional job. It was good to watch. You were there ringside. You literally, as you do, as you have done from when he was on the Anthony Joshua undercard, you were there saying, oi, I'm over here, I want you. It was kind of like reminiscent to back at the old two. Talk to us about that and, and what brought that on again. Yeah, of course, you know, like, I've, I've never not wanted this fight, as people, you know, will never hear me say that I didn't, because always, I've always wanted this fight. Uh, and I'm not really, really going to sit here and say too much rah right, rah right now. I need the people, it's out of my hands. People know what I want. I think people know what uh, Fabio wants. Let's just hope they can get that together. And I'm pretty sure we'll have a fight. I'm pretty sure we'll fight next year. Um, and I think it'll be a massive fight. You know, I think it's a really good fight. He, he's improving. I, I'm improving. And I think um, I think we'll deliver on the fight in front a lot more than than uh, David and Fabio did. I think it'll be a better fight, way better fight. Also over there was your former Team GB mate, Solomon Day, because he was literally on the apron with him, sat there saying, listen, don't forget about me. But Fabio seems to like, he, Fabio more wants you. That's the kind of energy that I got from those post-fight talks. Yeah, for, for whatever reason, I mean, I, I, I think Sol's I think Sol's a good fighter. I think he's, he's doing all the right things. Um, he's winning, he's fighting again tonight, isn't he? So we'll see how he performs tonight. But um, yeah, I think Fabio can only, only be choosing me off, I think, the financial benefit from it. Um, no other reason. I think, you know, like I say, Sol, Sol's doing his thing. He's going to probably a little bit under the radar. He doesn't like to talk too much. He likes to do his talking with his fists, so I respect that. Um, no, I'm, I'm not saying I've lit the world up, but I don't think Solomon has either yet. So I think, you know, I think his time will come and I'm pretty sure, you know, he'll have big fights ahead and I'm pretty sure all, me and him will, will fight at some point as well, you know, in the future. Even though we get on, I've got a lot of respect for him. Uh, I'm pretty sure me and Solomon end up having a tussle one day or another. Big Midlands derby. Um, hopefully I can win this British title and probably fight Solomon, you know, in the Midlands somewhere, defend it. 
We like to hear all of those names in the mix, but one of the things that I will say is I, I kind of like look at Fabio and his business mindset, his blueprint that he's setting for himself. He start, he's, a, he's a fight, he's a fat, no, he's a boxer free agent, so he, he's not signed to anyone. He's got, he's got his own management, that's who he walks with, and you've seen him now, you know, he's got the belts, he's had the fights, he's got a name for himself, he's socially aware, so he's got that profile. And he can kind of like go where he wants. He's the best. He's the best. You know, on the uh, the trolling stuff, he's witty, he's fast, he's good. Uh, he, he runs good banter. He really does. But you better hope he don't lose them fucking balls. Because if he loses them, he's fucked. What is he without the balls? Fuck all. So uh, I just want to, once, once I fight and relieve him of his balls, he can. Uh, he can he can carry on making fucking funny funny games and jokes on the internet, but um, now a, good, a, a good guy at heart, you know. I ain't got no malice. When me and him fight, it's not going to be no fifty fifty cuffs in the listen. Two men, competitive men, just fight each other. They can only be one. We love it. So your thoughts then on Tyson Fury and obviously Ngannou? Mix mix thoughts across with that. I'm one of these that you know believes that a fighter can have a bad night. But what do you think about that fight? It's just a strange build-up, you know. There's a lot going on there. Um, I've, I've I've sparred some of these guys, you know, like MMA and uh, some people that you, you expect to be, you know, less equipped to deal with you. But a lot of these people can surprise you, so you have to take your A game to, them, especially in a fight. Not so much in a spar, but if you're fighting them. You got to put them in their place quick. He didn't do that. Uh, Francis grew in confidence and and probably. Probably, probably nicked it, you know. Um, everyone that surrounded me thought he nicked it, thought he'd won, but I haven't watched it back, so I, I, I won't. Ju I won't judge because I didn't score. You know, when you're in there, there's a lot going on, but and the crowd's all behind the Garnu. So if I go back and score it, Fury probably did nick it by a couple, but I, I won't until I see it. What do you think it was then? Like you said, you've mentioned it being a bit overwhelming the whole week, the, the whole event, the whole lead up, everything, superstars. Rings coming from under the floor, everything. What do you think it was that made him not perform at how we know him to perform? It didn't feel like a boxing fight. It didn't feel like a boxing fight, like a concert with a, with a little bit of fighting going on at the end. Uh, yeah, it's a strange one. And this is going to sound weird, but you know, when there's no atmosphere, it don't work for it don't work for everyone. It worked for me. You know, at the Olympics, we had no one there. It's like ghost town. You can hear a pin drop. It's the same there. No one cheers. No one. No one chants. No one's pissed, so everyone's just like relaxed. You know what I mean? It's like watching boxing in, in, in with civilized, with civilized people. That, that never happens. You know what I mean? So everyone, it, it, I can understand it, but I still expect the Fury to do more. Do you know what I mean? But it is what it is. Listen, he's still every champion of the world. He's going into one of the biggest fights ever. I rate it. I rate him always. I've always will. Um, I want to see him do well, man. And. I think he's got a tough ass against Usyk, but you know, let's let's get behind get behind our man, and uh, I don't see Tyson Fury do it. We can go on to your friend Anthony Joshua. We saw that he's going up against Otto Wallin. Your thoughts on that fight? Otto Wallin sort of goes under the radar. He fought Gassiev the other day, got the win. He's the one that was Tyson Fury's warm up fight. I remember AJ laughing about that fight. He ends up cutting Tyson Fury, and now he's going up against him himself. Your thoughts on that? Uh, he's a good fighter, man. He beat my ass. Beat my ass. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first international fight ever, Otto Wallin. So first time ever face a fucking uh, left hander. Fucking at it. Felt so strange. He comes. I bet his hands fucking killed. He comes to hitting me every time he threw a punch. He hit me. Um, but yeah, capable. Knows his way around the ring. Experience. I, I I expect AJ to you know, just judging off the way I've seen his character the last few weeks, um, it means business. Now it's all right meaning business in front of the camera. We want to see him take that into the ring, uh, and I'm pretty sure he will. You know, I'm not. If he tells me, if, if I see that he's on it, I believe it. Do you know what I mean? But it's all about on the night. So, when it got what is it like three weeks, four weeks, four about five weeks, whatever. All, all will become uh, apparent then. So, you know, I, obviously I'm backing my friend. I think, I think on his day with the right training, with the right mindset, he beat he beats everyone. Um, he just I think he, as of late, not too many people have seen enough of that from him. He still, but I think he still boxed well recently. Um, but I think people want to see 
the old AJ so to say but now I think he's better now he's more mature he's don't take as many chances which isn't good for the isn't good for the casual but you know for himself and getting for a fight it seems to work so um, I expect him to have a, a edgy start but you know once, once he starts letting his hands go if he does I hope he does um, yeah I think he, I think he'll do a job on Atto. Deontay Wilder came in with a calm demeanour a, a completely different Deontay Wilder I had the pleasure of speaking to him myself and he's totally different. The losses, the fights that he's had with Tyson Fury, he seems to have humbled so much. He's going up against Parker. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, you, you, you just mature as a fighter. You mature a lot from a loss. You learn a lot from a loss, a lot about yourself, a lot about, you know, fighting as a whole and life as a whole. Deontay's a good fighter, there's no doubt about it. Great athlete, devastating puncher. But you can't sleep on Joe Parker. Okay, another one has beat me. Ugh. Uh -huh. But, um, yeah, capable man. He's been around a long time, so so I keep seeing people writing off Joseph Parker. They're not writing off man. He's tough. He's one of them fucking. Uh, he's one of the fucking Maui brothers. You know when they're on the side ring going, wee -ah, wee -ah, there's some mad noises. I'm like, uh, you know, I know they mean business. So I want. I wouldn't. Um, I would never ever write Joseph Parker off. That's what I do. Them fucking. Yeah, they're all yeah. the size of making also, crazy noises. Also, we had Big Baby Miller. Big Baby Miller in there. He's going up against Daniel Dubois. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I hope Dubois knocks his fucking head off. He's a cheat. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be fucking boxing. Why is he getting the opportunity? Why is he getting paid that money? He's a cheat. Man should be on the streets fucking fighting, I don't know, in a car park or something. Shouldn't be fighting in a boxing ring. But that's the game, isn't it? How do you think that guy fight goes with Daniel? People keep talking to me about Miller, this, Miller, that. Dubois will knock him out. If you if you stand there and you get hit by the boy, you get knocked out. I don't give a fuck. He's probably the hardest puncher in the division now, next to Wilder. Single puncher, probably the hardest. Um, I think he sleeps Miller. I think he sleeps him. We like those confident answers. Anyway, you are here tonight for your stable mate, Richard Riappol. And I've said it, you know, openly. It seems as if he's taking a little sp step back to go forward with his career. Talk to us about that. Yeah, it's just the business. The business in it is fucking. It's hard work at times. As a fighter, you want to fight often, regular, in good competitive fights. Richard hasn't been allowed to do that recently, but he's back in there tonight. Um, I expect to do a job, walk through this geezer. I'm going to speak to him right now and say, listen, let everyone, you know, really hurt him. I know that sounds nice, but hurt this fucking guy. Knock him unconscious. Let people know what you're about. Get, get up, grab that mic at the end. You ain't even got to tell the other fighters what you want. Tell the fucking the people around you, you know, get your finger out, let's get going, let's get cracking. And when can we expect to see you out? We need to see Fraser Clark back out. We need the action. When? In the new year. Um, February, March, let's hope. February, I hope. Yeah, I'm just uh, waiting on some news now in the next couple of weeks. And then once I've got that, yeah, man, should be should have some exciting news for everyone. I'm excited for you. Fraser, always a pleasure. No doubt I'll be at your gym. But thank you so much for your time. No order, always. With love, respect. People say I'm toxic, and honestly, I don't care.